All right, so we've got Neves from Italy. Welcome. Now, this is part of a course, and um, the course is called Teaching English because um, I believe that if your English is good enough, or at least you think it's good enough, it doesn't have to be that great, you can teach online. Hello, Nancy, and welcome. We've got Nancy from the United States. Mohammed is from Yemen. Rob is from China, so welcome. So how many of you have uh, given courses before? Or consider yourselves teachers. I think that's even better. Consider yourselves as teachers. So Neves, Nancy, excellent. All right. And Rob. Okay, let me just get back. Um, something that I removed. Okay, great. So let's get started. Um, I've added uh, two links. One link is to the course, and the other one is to uh, Teaching Perspectives. We're going to be uh, discussing in the course, okay, so you're invited to uh, go into the course. I'll be going in with you. We'll be talking about teaching styles, past teachers, learning languages, what it means to learn a language, your perspectives on education, your perspectives on languages, learning and teaching languages perhaps, as we go. So think about these things. Think about the past teachers that you had in general, and then maybe language teachers and about how you teach and see if there are any similarities. All right, so we're going to start with teaching styles. What would you say your teaching style is? And whatever you say is correct. Okay, there is no wrong answer in how we teach. Okay, I want you to keep that in mind when you start teaching English. Okay, there is no wrong way of doing it. Okay, so uh, if you could describe in a few words your teaching styles, or better still, if you could go into the following link, it'll take you a couple of uh, minutes. I don't think it should take too long. Let me add the link again in case you missed it. There's the link. It's called Teaching Perspectives. The more you learn about yourself as a teacher and as a learner, the easier it'll be for you to teach others. So Knives would say that his style is open-minded. That means you're an open-minded person? Or uh, what does it mean to be open-minded as a teacher? And when you say motivational, what does it mean? Nevis. Oh, okay, it's Nevis. Thank you.
Okay, so while you're trying to figure out what your teaching style is, and hopefully going into the uh, teaching perspective inventory, there's an inventory there, it shouldn't take you long. Nancy says somewhat conventional in the courses I teach at a local research center because the center itself has a structure. Okay, Nancy, so here you're going to have a chance to uh, be completely free. You're going to be teaching English online, and you're going to be doing it the way you want to do it, okay? Nobody's going to tell you how to teach, okay? You're going to be completely independent, so you have a chance to do things the way you think they should be done. So uh, when you say conventional, is that the way you want to go? with uh, teaching English to speakers of other language. We're talking about teaching English to speakers of other languages. Or maybe you want to keep some of the things that you uh, have been using. <laughs> exactly, Nancy. Okay, so think about your teaching style away from you know, what they've been telling you to do at uh, the organizations where you teach. So if you were to teach your way, what would your way be? Okay, what kind of system? Now, these are really difficult questions, okay, to throw at anybody, which is why I suggested that you take the inventory and find out what your teaching style is. Okay, so we're talking about a format. Nancy mentioned 90 minutes, talks without video, without a discussion. Not a, without video, without a discussion form? But I managed to get them to let me encourage students to do it. <laughs> okay, so Nancy, you, without an organization, how would you do it? Okay, so take the inventory and you can share the uh, information about yourself that you got from the inventory. That's great, Rob. Inspire others to learn. And let the learners dictate the format. Excellent. Okay, so as you take... Um, I'm going to screen share uh, and take you to the inventory. Okay, this is, um, oh, sorry. Um, okay, let me start the screen sharing. So I'm going to be screen sharing so that um, others can view this. as we go okay so um, here I go here is the inventory okay this was created by two Canadians you can also get the book but the idea is to find out what kind of teacher you are and uh, you'll see changes as you go you may find that today you are this kind of teacher a couple of months from now you may change so you add your first name your last name and so on and then if you belong to a certain university uh, that requires this or you're not a member of any of these groups you just follow through A little information about uh, teacher teaching perspectives inventory. You may read about it. It takes a while. There's also interpretation, the kind of teachers that you'll find that, that you are. You could be a teacher who just transmits information. Um, socializing with students developmental and what that means, nurturing, 
and a teacher who believes in social reform. Once you take the inventory, you'll have a chance to share the information and I'll show you where you'll be able to uh, share it. You'll be able to share it in the course. Okay, and here is the course. It's called Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, TESOL. It's a course for anyone who wants to teach English. We'll be discussing different methods of teaching. Okay, the course, by the way, has just started. The aim of the course is to connect educators from around the world for collaborative exchange of ideas and best practices. So it's not only for beginner teachers, it's for others who want to get ideas. And the course will be ongoing. Okay, it'll be collaborative learning. We'll be talking about using WizIQ Live Class, Google Drive, WebQuest for Blended and the Flipped Classroom. We'll have invited guests. We'll talk about innovations and best practices. You'll learn how to create socially engaging learning activities and not only create them, but actually practice them in your classes. These uh, can be done in blended learning formats, face-to-face -face or fully online. Okay, so that's the course. The course consists of a course feed where there are discussions. Here are some of the discussions for today. First question is, how do you think people can learn languages? Second one is describe your favorite teacher. I believe Nancy has already done it. There's a voice thread. This is one technique of getting students to speak. And then what is your teaching style with the teaching perspectives? The uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'm using right now is also available in the class. You'll also find other courseware. Courseware consists of tutorials and live classes. If you want to contact me, you may do so through this contact provider. If you want to see who the other course learners are, there's a list of them. There are 200 and 18 now, and you can see that they're from around the globe. If you click on their names, you'll be able to. Um, there's Neves, sorry for mispronouncing your name, okay, from Italy. If you're interested, you just click on that and you'll be able to uh, follow and contact Neves. Okay, so let me go back to the class so we can continue. Hello, Arwa, and welcome. All right, so as I said, I'm recording this on YouTube, so um, I'm not sure whether you're okay with having... your name available. All right, so teaching styles. So maybe now you're in a better position in um, saying a few words about your teaching style. I took the uh, perspectives, and uh, those of you who know me will not be surprised <laughs> about the results of, the, uh, of my teaching style. Okay, and uh, I came up pretty high with nurturing. Okay, um... I do care about my students, and I think that probably comes out. Okay, so I would put caring as one of my uh, styles. Okay, I don't know if nurturing is the word that I would use, but caring. All right, so if you're a caring teacher, and I think most teachers are, I can't imagine a teacher who's not caring. So caring is one style. Any other styles that think of your past teachers and uh, some of the things that you would write down as their style, that might help. 
and then you can compare and see if you are actually following some of those uh, styles and we usually do we usually follow our past teachers so think of your past teachers what qualities did you like about them what did you like about your past teachers maybe you're using styles that you didn't particularly like maybe you're rebelling against uh, some of the styles that you saw as a learner So let's see. Now I've said I've just. Oh, you finished it so quickly. I thought it took forty-five minutes. All right. So you're gonna have the results. I think you get it in your email. So caring, flexibility, creativity, joy in teaching, joy in learning, challenging. All right. So these are some of the styles that um, Nancy um, believes in. Now look, it, your teaching style may not be uh, something that you are happy with you might want to change your teaching styles so think of what teaching styles you would like to uh, to have okay and think of your past teachers so Nancy says caring flexible your past teachers were flexible they were creative uh, they, they found joy in teaching joy in learning they were challenging okay um, that's interesting because when I think of my past teachers, uh, they were very strict. Some of the teachers that I admired most were strict, the strict ones. And um, it's interesting, but many of us remember our, the teachers who were strict. Maybe not the teachers that everybody loved, but... Uh, so think of the characteristics that you admired in your teachers and if you are that kind of teacher um, very strict okay Neves so are those the ones that you favored or oh, you went to run by nuns okay so do you uh, practice some of those uh, characteristics are you a strict teacher do you still believe in being strict and discipline as uh, something that you would like to do nice ones so you mean the strict ones were not nice so is strict negative okay for you would you say that being strict is negative no so strict is positive okay so now Neve sorry do you teach in a in a school a physical school okay yes well I know that I teach in a high school and I have definitely I have to be very strict 
um, with high school with kids you have to be strict but even today in college in a physical college you need to be strict otherwise especially if you're teaching English or any other language otherwise the students are going to be all over the place you have to come in with um, at least with the confidence that you're the boss okay the teacher is always the boss at least um, you know in the physical classroom is Elysium is that a high school you're the boss okay you can be flexible and nice but they have to know who the boss is okay because you run a classroom you need to manage it okay so managing a classroom a physical classroom oh it's a high, great so managing a physical classroom needs you know that they have to know who the boss is okay so it's like a family okay not everybody does what they want okay anything else else about past teachers uh, what about the rest of the participants if you could just add your thoughts um, and it remember whatever you think is correct because you're going to be the teacher and you're going to develop your style and if you're happy then it'll work you can't use somebody else's style it has to be authentic or it's not going to work okay your way you're going to develop your way of teaching and it's going to be you and it's going to be authentic so you can't go into class um, you know like somebody else okay it's going to be you and that's what um, this class is about it's about you and how you can develop your specific teaching style and it ha you have to be happy with it mixed in exactly Nancy okay so it is it's us you cannot mimic somebody else and you have to keep that in mind or it's not gonna work hello Leo good to see you so Leo also teaches and I believe Leo you teach online have you ever taught in a physical classroom Leo because I think it's quite different uh, teaching online is a lot easier because there are no management challenges everybody does what you want them to do and if they don't then you're in trouble it's very different right Leo yes definitely different but you know what teaching online will help improve teaching face to face because you will gain confidence and that's what it's all about I think the uh, the main ingredient of uh, teaching is confidence if you have confidence your student it'll pass on confidence creates confidence in your students so if you're confident your students will also be confident it may take time but confidence does create confidence all right next so after you think about your teachers and you know what you value and what you would like to uh, carry over learning languages it's really important for you especially if you've never taught English before but to think about what does it mean to learn a language how many of you have learned at least one language okay if you can give me a thumbs up how many of you have learned at least one language okay most people have otherwise they wouldn't think of teaching a language and most how many of you um, have learned English as a foreign language EFL or as a second language okay if you could uh, thumbs up thumbs down if English is your native language then it would be thumbs down okay so for me I would put my thumb down with Nancy but I don't know if that's an advantage that may be a disadvantage because teachers whose native language is not English may be in a better position to teach non-native speakers English because they've gone through it themselves 
Oh, you are Neves. Okay, great. So Neves, you're at a disadvantage with Nancy and I because um, you have never learned English as a foreign language. And those who have learned English as a foreign language would be better candidates, in my opinion, to teach English. Okay, so that's an advantage. If you have learned another language, you're at an advantage. You have, Maria. So uh, it's been a long time. That's great. Okay, so what does it mean to learn a language? You know, think of the process that you went through. Um, Neves has learned Italian. Nancy has learned, I believe, Spanish, maybe other languages. I have learned French as a foreign language. I have learned a language at home. I've learned Hungarian in a different environment, not in school. You know, what experiences you've had learning a language in the classroom and learning a, a language outside the classroom. Is it the same? Okay, learning a language inside the classroom and outside in a natural environment. Of course it's not the same. Okay, so um, I picked up Hungarian because I heard my mother and father talk, you know, between them because they didn't want us to know what they were saying. So that's how I picked it up because I was curious what they were saying. And then I picked up French when I went to France and that was another way of learning the language. Learning a language in the classroom was quite different. So think of the, you know, what makes it easy to learn a language, a foreign language, in the country itself. I'm not talking about a native language. I'm talking about learning a foreign language in the country itself, in the target language. Wow, Leo, when did you start? <laughs> Before you were born? I thought you were... Uh, you were about 25 years old. Okay, so what helps? Okay, what makes it easy? Oh, that's wonderful, Leo. So you're going to be picking up French. Oh, you're 35. Okay. <laughs> so you started learning English when you were 10. That's pretty young. That's a great, uh, you know, I think before the uh, critical age for... Uh, language skills is about 10 years old. After the age of 10, you know, it, it's different. But why? Churning and learning. Okay, so what are some of the things that make it easy? Okay, so these are some of the things that you'll be thinking about. And of course, answering again in, um, in the course. Okay, so the questions are in the course and you'll have a chance to um, answer them. Okay, let me see if I can get the link again to the course so that you can um, answer them in the course. Okay, so there's the link to the course. I hope you'll... Um, answer them. Look, the more, and if you have a blog, by the way, how many of you have blogs? See, in a discussion form, you're limited, and it stays on the discussion form for as long as you can go to the discussion form. But on a blog, that's the best place for any kind of learning. So for this course, I would create a special blog for the course. These blogs are free, so why not? Okay, so for the course, you are encouraged to create a blog. There's a link to the course again. Create a blog.
Okay, I'm going to be creating a blog too, just for the course, um, because this is where you can add all the information and then we can share the links to the blog. Okay, and all you have to do is go into the blog and we can learn from one another. So I think that's even better uh, than a course discussion. Oh, you have one. Leo. So is that for everything, all your courses, or specifically to this course? Okay, I'm not sure what is better, <laughs> to have one blog for everything or to have specific blogs. But it's, you know, it's something that you would answer for yourself, what is good for you. Okay, it's like writing a book. Do you keep a journal of one book or you mix them all up together? Okay, so learning languages. What does it mean to learn a language for you? Okay, and in the environment, in the classroom, outside the classroom. Next, education perspectives. Thank you, uh, Neves. Education. What does education mean for you? Not learning, education. And how does education differ from learning? It's not the same. So what is your perspective on education? Why learn a language, for example? Why learn anything? And where? Is education part of an organization? What is education? You know, I, um, I try to answer that question when I was uh, in grade eight. I wrote an essay and then it turned into a, uh, a contest. I don't know how it turned into a contest, but it was a speaking contest um, for the whole school and then for the whole district. I don't know how I got involved in that because I was so shy. In any case, I said when I was in grade eight that education is a value. I said it's a value. I don't know where I got that from, um, but that was my perspective on education. That's nice, Mohammed. Learning from the cradle to the... That's education or that's learning? So... Um, how what is education what is your perspective on education so education is learning so why do they say education what do we just call it learning okay we call it online learning but we call it education when we refer to a physical building or when we talk about degrees what is your education background? We don't say what is your learning background. We say what is your education background? Not learning, education. Schooling, exactly. When we talk about education, we talk about schooling. When we talk about schooling, we talk about schools. Okay, so your K-12, your high school, your... Uh, college or university education. Ah, very good, Leo. And then we talk about self, being self-educated. Right, self-educated. We also talk about parenting, education before school, preschool education. And we talk about preschool education. We talk about home Okay, the education that we get at home. Do we get an education at home? We talk about people who are well-educated. What does it mean to be well-educated? Poorly educated. Poor education. He received or she received poor education. What is poor education? Oh, sorry, I made a mistake in that spelling. Poor education good ed versus good education. social upbringing so it's not education okay so poor good education
Yes, it is our first school. It's a very important school. But it is in a physical building. You're right. Nobody was educated uh, preschool online. Okay? But there is something called, is it online education or online learning? Okay, Rob, thank you. Okay, Rob is... All right, so transmission, apprenticeship, looks like they're more or less the same developmental as 38 nurturing and social reform. Interesting to see how it prioritizes. Yes, so first place is apprenticeship. And what does it mean, Rob? If you'd like the microphone, I'd love to give it to you. But when we say poor education, we mean home. When we say good education, we mean school, right? Yes, TPI. Uh, Maria, maybe you came in late. I'm not sure. But there's an inventory called... Um, let's see if I can get... I can't get the link for some reason. My Mac will not give it to me. But Maria, I added it um, at the beginning of the class. Uh, here it is. Let me get it for you. There it is. It's an inventory. I also added it to the course. And I hope that everybody has joined the course so that we can continue communicating. The course is just a home base. It's a place where uh, I'll be adding the live classes. There is, whoops, there is the course. Okay, TESOL course. Oh, you have it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you can also copy chat at the end. Okay, so think about this is really important. Remember, we're you're going to teach English as uh, to speakers of other languages from your perspectives, so that it's authentic and it'll come through. If you're going to be somebody else, it's going to be picked up. All right, next is our language perspectives. Okay. How do we feel about languages? And I mean it. What is language for you? Not teaching language, but what is language for you? What does language mean? This is really important. It opens the world. Why? Why does it open the world? What is it about language that opens the world? What do you mean? Ah, okay, we've got Daniela. Hello, Daniela. It's uh, communication, communication. <laughs> I love that. Communication, communication. CCC, same C's. Uh, squeak, speech. Um, I love languages. It's a way to connect with other people. Yeah, but today you don't need it. You don't need it. You just need to Google Translate. You don't need to learn any language. You can communicate with Google Translate. It's going to get better and better. No. A way, that's right. Language is a means of communication. It's how we uh, understand. Are you sure, Rob? Does language help us understand or maybe misunderstand? Okay, it's using words in such a way that we hope we will be understood. We are often misunderstood. Okay. <laughs> it, but it's going to get better and better, Neves. It really is. You can misunderstand. <laughs> My Mexican doesn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but I'm even native, you know, when I talk about language, I'm talking about native, okay? So let's take a look at native. What is a language for you? Your native language. Forget about other languages. Your language. So what is your native language, first of all? Okay, if you could add your native language, what is it? So mine is English. Arabic. All right. And brain speaking English okay so we your native language what does it mean to speak your name or to not only speak is language only speaking what what is it 
what is language what does it mean for you and I'm talking about your native language okay so if your native language is Arabic what does it mean to, to what does it mean for you it means Mohammed four skills it means your belief yes Maria it's not only your what your mother spoke it's not the language that your mother spoke it's the language that you know 100 percent 100 percent maybe your mother lang you know your mother tongue your mother's mother tongue was Italian or um, I don't know some other language like my mother's was uh, I think Czech Czech Czechoslovakian my father's was uh, well is still I guess um, Hungarian yes that's true Nancy that's true but it's still not their native because they're well you know what this is a question what is a native language mean linguistically <laughs> native language linguistically linguistically there is a criteria you know for a language being linguistically native what people around me what I know what I want my sons to know so they can communicate with family in a meaningful understood way they can be so precise grammatic but lose it when it comes to idioms for example yes but what you know what is innate okay here's a word for you innate um, you know something that they're born with okay these are there are different language theories okay theories of language okay now we're getting a bit academic but it you do have to maybe look into it okay uh, theories of language okay there are theories of language and there are also theories of language learning yes that's right Mohammed in some countries the terms native language mother tongue refer to the language of one's ethnic group I uh, know I'm talking about Maria linguistic okay the linguistic terminology okay for native language at first oh hello Helena good to see you welcome you must have heard me thinking about you I did and I didn't use language and and it I managed to communicate without words how is that possible so is language the only means of communication now we're getting into something else okay so um, we're talking about language what is language and people mention communication but it's only one form of communication there are other forms so how is language different from other forms of communication and Mohammed mentioned four skills Okay, Mohammed, you mentioned for that's right, Nancy. There's also the social linguistic aspect of language. Excellent. So we've got uh, other skills here. We've got thinking. Okay, because um, you want to be understood, but language is not only always the best way to communicate what you mean because uh, if you only use language you may be misunderstood okay so language is not the only means that's right language and context exactly Maria so it's not only the language that you use for communication but you're communicating other things okay through the language that's right this body language very good okay so think about your perspective on language what does language mean to you and how are you going to transmit this or teach 
okay English when it comes to English how are you going to communicate all these ideas that you have because you do have lots of ideas and these ideas will be communicated you will be using all okay everything to communicate your ideas so let's take a look at them you're going to be using all these things when you teach English as a uh, second or foreign language or as they call it today TESOL which is teaching English to speakers of other languages other languages than English so you're going to be taking the following into consideration you're going to be thinking about teaching styles and take the inventory to get a better idea of your teaching style but that's not the only place where you can get ideas but I'd like you to write about your teaching styles and you can use your blog or you can use the course to add everything about your teaching styles and then your past teachers you can use VoiceThread I know Nancy has so use VoiceThread and write about in the comment box or speak about or do both or again on your blog write about your past teachers why do you think about them? Why do you admire them? Why did you hate them? What did you hate about your past teachers? What did you admire? What qualities did they have that you liked or hated? And then learning languages. What does it mean to learn a language? What goes into it in your opinion? And then you can get information about what ling linguists say about l learning languages learning first languages second and so on learning a native language what makes a native language okay these are some ideas that you might want to look into and then education what is education what is your perspectives on education what are other people's perspectives on education what does it mean and then language as we just said what is language for you what is language for others okay so we've come to the end of my part are there any questions would you like to um, get the microphone so you can share some of your thoughts you're welcome to do that <laughs> oh, Nancy. well you know what when you become when I first started and you'll hear this uh, if you're a native speaker you'll hear this from other teachers when I first started teaching English I had no idea except for my French what subjunctive was what conditionals I had no idea what conditionals were I'm, I mean were there were all these terms like present progressive present simple perfect you know the future perfect um, do you know what a future perfect is Nancy I had no idea about these except from the French plus parfait I knew it in French but I didn't know it existed in English nobody taught me that kind of grammar I did have grammar in school but you know parts of speech that was what we learned in grammar parts of a sentence but that's it you know simple sentences complex sentences but that's it I had no idea about the different tenses who talked about tenses we had the past simple I mean we just didn't discuss tenses because they were not problematic everybody knew that there was a present past and future tense and nobody got mixed up but why all the others so that's how Nancy there's a different grammar for teaching English to speakers of other languages okay you have the main focus uh, was on tenses like everything was about tenses now it's ridiculous we know that it's not important but in those days yeah future perfect well by the end of the lesson we will have covered we will have covered that's the future okay so by the end of the lesson I could have said at the beginning right so 
by the end of the lesson, we will have covered teaching styles, past teachers, learning languages, education perspectives, and language perspectives. Okay, by the end of the lesson, we will have covered. That's the future perfect. Okay, ridiculous, right? And then you learn things like indirect speech. What? Indirect and direct speech. All kinds of things that I had no ideas about. Okay, so any questions or comments? Yeah, you learn when you teach. That's so true, Maria. You know, the best way to learn is really to teach because you have no choice. You know, when I went into that classroom, my first classroom, I taught, taught adults. I had to uh, learn. Education, Helena says, is a broad term that can have many meanings, but it's generally defined as a process of learning. Yeah, but what is it for you? Formal education, formal learning, school. Yes, it is very formal. Well, as I said before, I don't know if you were here, Helena, when I was in grade eight, I, ma I uh, made a speech about education and I said that it's a value. Education is a value. That's how I started. I don't know where it came from. Yes, you need to be brave. Okay, any other comments? Oh, not that kind of value. I think I meant some a moral value. Not, not a uh, mathematical value. I don't think I, I had that in my mind. Neve said, look, good that I teach at a local business, so I go from grammatical stresses. <laughs> I like when you say grammatical stress because it is a lot of stress in many ways to spoken stress. You know, it's interesting. Uh, okay, that's where, uh, you know, <laughs> yes, words, stress has uh, a few meanings okay especially these days so um, yes stress speech could be very stressful so um, <laughs> that's a good question so yes adults do want grammar okay um, they do want grammar. They want to feel that the teacher is teaching some content. Okay, content for adults is really, really important. If you're not giving me content, you didn't teach me. And if you didn't teach me, I didn't learn. So that's, that's how it usually goes. Well, that's exactly where you have to go, Maria. You have to go where and, and think about yourself as a uh, foreign language learner, learning German, and then that's how you teach English. You have to keep that in mind as a teacher. All right, um, please feel free to uh, copy the chat now and if you haven't already done so, to uh, join the course and we'll continue the discussions there. If you have a blog and you're going to blog your way through the course, please add the link so that we can follow your blog and learn with you. And remember, content is not always what learning is about. And you may want to um, pass this on to your students, that it's not about content. It's about practicing, as someone mentioned before, practice makes perfect. It's about practicing the language. And nobody can learn a language by listening to someone tell them what it's all about. They need to practice. <laughs> so um, practice, speak, read. Right. 
practice, practice, practice. And what I think um, Neve said, communicate, communicate, and communicate. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next week at the same time. Bye for now. I'll be adding the YouTube uh, embed code into the uh, course courseware. Okay, you should be familiar with the terms. Courseware is where the content is, and course feed is where the discussions are. Bye for now. Have a great week, the rest of the week. Bye bye.